The Razer Edge is poised to become an absolute powerhouse of an Android device and handheld with its Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 mobile processor. However, some may or may not remember that this isn't the first time Razer has delivered powerful hardware focused on delivering the best Android gaming experience. The original Razer phone launched way back in November of 2017 and brought to the table a beautiful design, powerful hardware fueled by the Snapdragon 835, a gorgeous 120Hz 1440p display designed as a flagship phone meant for gamers. It's probably hard to imagine, but this was very unusual in 2017, and the Razer phone launched before the likes of the ROG phone, Black Shark, and Red Magic. I guess you could say that the Razer phone was a trendsetter, despite many critics not understanding why it existed. But Razer was not going to be outdone by its competition. Razer followed up with a sequel less than a year later in October of 2018 with the Razer Phone 2, and in today's video we will take a look at this device and see how it holds up today on the cusp of the Razer Edge's release. I am Rob the Retro Tech Dad and together let's revisit the once champion of gaming phones. Say hello to the Razer Phone 2, Razer's second attempt at building a flagship phone designed with gamers in mind. Now please excuse the beating this poor device has received, I picked this up secondhand since a device I've wanted to add to my collection for some time now. The Razer Phone 2 launched in October of 2018 for a launch price of $799 US dollars, and at the time with its price point, it was positioned as a flagship phone meant for those who game. So what did $799 and $2018 get you? The Razer Phone 2 came equipped with a 5.72 inch IGZO IPS LCD 120Hz 16x9 display with a 2560x1440 resolution with a whopping 513 ppi pixel density. Now you might be wondering, IGZO what? IGZO, or indium gallium zinc oxide, is a transistor that is used with panels to reduce power consumption, improve refresh rate, and allows for higher pixel density, which explains its usage in this device. This panel, designed by Sharp, really was impressive for its time, and a big step up in display technology for mobile devices. But let's talk about that 16 by 9 aspect ratio for a moment. The device was criticized for having a 16 by 9 display during a time that many phones were moving to 20 by 9 aspect ratios. However, it's this exact weakness that makes the Razer Phone 2 many years later a nice welcome. For many of us retro enthusiasts, the 16 by 9 ratio is far more welcome than something like the GPD XP Plus with its super wide 20 by 9 aspect ratio. In fact, the Razer Edge it's about to launch shares the same super wide aspect ratio, and for native Android content it's great, but not so great when you're trying to emulate consoles like the Nintendo Wii, Switch, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation Portable. Sure, there are some hacks you can use to make them use the entire real state of the display, but this tends to break things in games, not all of the games support it, and it does require some setup. And the further back we go, the worse it gets. Just take a look at Super Nintendo on the Razer Phone 2's display, and then let's hop on over to the XP+, Plus, and you can see just how silly it starts to look. Another big selling point of this high quality display is the 120Hz refresh rate. Again, in 2017 and 18, this wasn't a common thing for mobile devices, but it wasn't just a benefit for gaming. Navigating through the Android user interface looked smoother, and it was especially noticeable when scrolling through text. But yes, for mobile gaming, having 120Hz on one hand was ridiculous, but on the other allowed for very smooth gameplay for the games that could push those frames. Today, there are far more games making use of that 120Hz refresh, and oddly enough makes this device and screen more relevant. Games like Call of Duty Mobile, Alto's Adventure, Oddmar, and Reckless Getaway 2, among tons of others, all have support for 120Hz panels. And even five years later, this panel is still very high resolution, with a ridiculous pixel density. For one, there isn't any dedicated Android handheld that has the same amount of pixel density or resolution. So even in today's world, the display doesn't feel out of date, and everything looks so nice and crisp. I mean seriously, look at how good this panel is. Oh, and then there was its fairly cutting-edge power. It was powered by the Snapdragon 8. 
45 processor with vapor chamber cooling. Yes, the same type of tech that helps cool down devices such as the Xbox series consoles and found in high-end laptops like those from Razer. The Snapdragon 845 definitely was considered flagship performance at the time, and if this chipset sounds familiar, that's because it's the same one inside the popular Android handheld, the AYN Odin Pro. It's no secret what the Snapdragon 845 is capable of, given that there's years worth of documentation and videos on it. It is truly amazing how performant it still is, despite it being nearly five years old. I can play a good portion of the PlayStation 2 library, Wii, and even have better Switch emulation support with custom drivers thanks to that Snapdragon chipset. In the Android world, games like Fortnite can run at high settings without any issues. Basically, the Razer Phone 2, a device from 2018, can still handle all that the world of Android has to offer. And speaking of Android, the overall Android experience out of the box is really solid. The device is snappy and responsive. I can open multiple apps and tabs in the browser thanks to the 8GB of LP DDR4 RAM built into the Razer Phone 2, which is still an enormous amount of memory for an Android device. Now back in 2018, the device shipped with Android 8.1 and came with a Nova launcher out of the box. The device would eventually see support officially to Android 9. However, thanks to the development community, something like Lineage OS is still very much supported today on the Razer Phone 2. Now the device I have here is already updated to Android 9, and I do really like the experience with Android 9. And I'm very thankful that outside of the Razer apps, this thing wasn't loaded with ridiculous amounts of bloatware, so it's a fairly vanilla Android experience. However, I might at some point consider Lineage OS, and the latest version of Lineage supported is version 20, which is based on Android 13 and gives even more longevity to the Razer Phone 2. The Razer Phone 2 even had a controller attachment designed around it called the Razer Jungle Cat. Now keep in mind, this is before the Kishi version 1 or version 2 existed. The Razer Jungle Cat was a pretty wild design. It had switch-like Joy-Con attachments, and it was completely Bluetooth enabled, so in theory, it could work with any device. Except that when it came to Android phones, it couldn't. The Jungle Cat actually shipped with three specific cases, which were made to fit the Razer Phone 2, Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, really limiting its uses as a controller attachment for Android phones. The controller did have a switch style grip attachment so that you could use the Jungle Cat as a regular Bluetooth controller, but the entire design just wasn't so great. Each controller had to be charged separately with a USB Type-C cable, and overall it's obvious that outside of owning the aforementioned phones, it wasn't worth owning for most. But let's focus back on the Razer Phone 2. Now this attachment ironically gives you a superior grip over something like the Kishi version 1 and version 2. Placing the case on the Razer Phone 2 and then sliding on these controller attachments really made the overall unit feel very solid, similar to a Nintendo Switch. So if you had a Razer Phone 2 lying around and paired it with this Jungle Cat to use as a dedicated handheld, it's actually a pretty awesome solution. But over the years, as many know, Razer released the Kishi version 1 and then the version 2. And surprisingly, the Razer Phone 2 works really well with the Kishi version 2. And ironically, I'm excited to try out the improved version 2 Pro from the Razer Edge as it adds a 3.5mm jack to the controller, addressing one of the Razer Phone's weaknesses, and that is the removal of a 3.5mm jack on the device. Additionally, the Jungle Cat did not have analog triggers, and so thanks to Razer's own improvements in the world of controller attachments, an old and forgotten device like the Razer Phone 2 actually benefits from these improvements. And speaking of using the Kishi version 2 with the Razer Phone 2, this combination, along with the 16x9 screen, makes it a really awesome package to use for game streaming services such as Game Pass Cloud and GeForce Now. And because this was a flagship phone back in 2018, it had a solid Wi-Fi chip built into it with support for 5GHz dual band wireless AC, and therefore it handles cloud and local game streaming incredibly well. Finally, for a lot of my viewers of this channel, the Razer Phone 2 makes for a pretty awesome emulation device device, as I sort of alluded to earlier in this video. That Snapdragon 845 can handle quite a bit, and thanks to the vapor chamber cooling, can be pushed pretty hard for pretty long. It can handle a significant amount of the PlayStation 2 library, and emulation with Dolphin playing games from Wii and GameCube are no problem. In fact, the Razer Phone 2 can handle some Switch emulation, and does more of it than other dedicated handhelds like the popular Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. And again, that 16x9 aspect ratio screen is just a lot easier to work with and look at than something like the upcoming Razer Edge's 20x9 aspect ratio display. So why is it that we never saw a Razer Phone 3? Unfortunately, my memory isn't as good as it used to be, and so I spent a good amount of time researching the Razer Phone 2, going back in time to 2018, and watching videos, reading reviews, and just getting a feel for the overall sentiment of the product at that time. There were definitely a few key complaints against the Razer Phone 2, and you have to keep in mind that this device was competing against some heavy competition from established leaders like Samsung and Apple with their flagship devices featuring the latest and greatest in technology. Despite the Razer Phone 2 having impressive specs, it did fail, especially in critics 
eyes in a few key areas that were expected of a premium priced flagship product. The Razer Phone 2 shipped with a pretty mediocre front and rear facing camera, and while I don't think many gamers necessarily care about this all that much, it's definitely something that many reviewers disliked about the device, especially at its price point. The device also did not include a 3.5mm headphone jack, which to be fair was already becoming a common thing for phones at the time. Finally, and probably the one very consistent criticism that the Razer Phone 2 received was with its overall design. The 60x9 display really made most see this device as antiquated in an ocean of 20x9 devices. This led to the phone looking blocky and uncomfortable to hold, the front speaker grills were dust and dirt magnets, and the mirror black glass finish on the back was a fingerprint magnet and was also considered to be slippery. Unfortunately for Razer, I think the device just ultimately didn't gain the traction that they were hoping for, and sales were probably not what they wanted, and so the Razer Phone 3 never happened. Of course, fast forward to October of 2022, when the Razer Edge was announced, and for many fans of the Razer Phone, I'm sure their first thought was that they're finally getting the Razer Phone 3 after all of these years. For my Razer Phone 2, I'm surprisingly enjoying this device quite a bit. There's a bit of irony here that for many of the things that made the Razer Phone 2 a poor purchase in 2018, actually doesn't bother me all that much in today's world. I find that it's still a pretty solid device overall, and my specific device's 4000 mAh battery have seen some signs of aging, so I will be at some point going through the process to replace it with a new one. The USB Type-C port is starting to get loose, and while it can still charge and handle data through it, it's obvious that it will not make it for the long haul, which is a common issue that plagued these devices. Finally, despite my newfound love for the Razer Phone 2, I am obviously not suggesting one run out and buy one. Because the Razer Phone 2 did not sell all that well, they are oftentimes harder to come by on the secondhand market, but even more so finding one that is in decent condition, as I have found these devices have not aged well. Many of them will ship with broken USB-C ports or have significant cosmetic wear, and because of this, a unit in somewhat decent working condition can go for more than what it's worth, especially in today's world. To give you a good idea, it took me since the announcement of the Razer Edge to find a good deal on a unit that was in decent enough condition for me to feature in today's video. And so as we approach the launch of the Razer Edge, I'm excited that this time around I get to be part of Razer's experiment from the start. For the fans of the Razer phone, the Edge in many ways feels like the sequel they never got. I guess time will only tell if the Edge can be a success for Razer, but despite its powerful hardware, there are already signs that maybe the third time isn't a charm for them. Some have criticized the use of the 20x9 display for a device being marketed as a handheld. Others find the Kishi attachment to be a lazy design choice. The 5G version, which would essentially make the Edge a phone, is exclusive to Verizon in the United States for the time being. The Wi-Fi version is looking like it's going to have a limited launch, at least at the start, with it only being available in the United States, and overall, it feels like Razer doesn't have much confidence in their own product. And so, with my $5 reservation, I put in my order for the Wi-Fi version of the Edge, and we'll be covering it very soon on my channel, and I look forward to seeing you all there. I am the Retro Tech Dad, and thank you so much for joining me on this retrospective of the Razer Phone 2.